Are you planning out your next application architecture and don't know if you want to try something new? As cloud native developers, we often have to make decisions about what to use on our front end, back end, and that middle tier, which must include some choices around databases here. For today's topic, I want to talk through Redis as your next pick for your database technology here. Hello, my name is Jamil Spain. I'm a brand technical specialist in the U.S. financial services market. When I made my decisions on how to solution Redis in my architectures, I used three simple categories to categorize their importance and how it rates uh, for me. And there were the flexibility that it offers me, the implementation, how easy is it to implement, and of course, the deployment, the most important thing. Now, one thing to keep top of mind about Redis is that it is an in-memory data store. That's to say that everything you put in sits in memory, so it has very, very quick and easy access to it. But the role that it plays great is as a cache. And it can also function as a full-fledged uh, data store if you would like to. And of course, if you want to dig even deeper, there are certainly some messaging capabilities uh, there as well. Now, when we talk about cache, what exactly do you mean? Well, that can be any type of structures from strings to hashes, to list. I think we all get the picture about what can fit uh, definitely into this uh, database there and in your architecture. And when I think about it, um, as a mobile developer, web developer, myself uh, um, in practice, I know there are some times when I want to just put a, a set of data somewhere quickly to access it later. And this is really where this shines. And so it really helped me to know, categorize it when I needed a quick place to cache something, very, very easy. Redis was a strong check mark uh, there as well. Let's actually put a check mark there. Now, implementation. There are certainly all types of SDKs are available from C uh, to JavaScript. I just do JS to Java to Python. Be sure to check Redis.io for all the SDKs that are available, but that was a very important factor to me. Depending on the language of choice that I want to develop with, how easy is it to actually integrate uh, uh, and implement uh, the infrastructure there, the data structures that I want to save. Also, one thing that was a big bonus for me is that Redis can also, is compatible with a lot of IoT architectures, whether that's the Raspberry Pi, I'll do some abbreviation here, and also or any other ARM-based uh, um, uh, solutions there as well. It also means that it's really relatively easy to implement as a supporting program into a lot of architectures um, that I want to do. And then finally, how does this work for deployment? Well, I make my decisions in dev. How is it for, easy is for me to make single instances to prove out my case, of course, and see how it works and how it functions. But definitely, as I get something more mature and I want to advance up to my production or more production level instances here, it works off the traditional main node and secondary node model. One thing of, uh, of note here is that what I did like about this is that as you publish to the main node, it will do automatic caching replication to the secondaries. That's not something that I really have to worry about. And I can scale out adding more and more replicas, uh, secondary nodes there as I need to, to ensure the resiliency and that it will always be available. As we know, we want to make sure if we leverage this as a strong uh, component of my architecture for caching, I want to make sure it's going to be resilient and be up from there. Check mark there. Now this is just an entry, in, entry conversation into Redis as your database choice. Feel free to check redis.io for more. Thank you for your time. If you have questions, please drop us a line below. And if you want to see more videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe.